கோவில் சிறந்த திராவிட நல் திருநாடும் தரித்தனரும் திலகமுமே அத்திலக வாசனை போல் அனைத்துலகும் இன்பமுற எத்திசையும் புகழ் மணக்க இருந்த பெரும் தமிழனங்கே Thank you, sir. One tree can start a forest. One word can frame a goal. One candle can wipe out a darkness. A true leader has a confidence to stand alone. One such a personality, our madam, Dr. L.K. Hema, Professor and Head, Department of ECE and BME, to give a welcome address. Welcome you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Nirmala. So a yeah, warm uh, good morning to one and all assembled here for this uh, wonderful uh, uh, webinar on faculty refresher program Uh, for the uh, faculty members on teaching learning and evaluation and ob perspective so uh, on behalf of our management principal and on my own behalf it is my privilege to uh, propose the welcome address for this uh, uh, today's session on this online webinar first let me extend my warm welcome to our beloved principal sir who is the driving force and initiator of this uh, uh, avit center for uh, continuing education program uh, that was initiated by him and under this banner we are regularly conducting various programs uh, so to start with once we initiated this uh, acce uh, we have uh, conducted uh, one uh, excellent program Uh, on reforms agenda on education uh, national education policy 2020 which was uh, addressed by dr uh, shakila t shamshu madam uh, who was the uh, uh, who has initiated this uh, national education policy formulation next we have conducted effective mentoring by uh, dr rama and third program is aict initiative in uh, comprehensive training policy for uh, technical teachers by dr shanmugam eji from uh, nittr and next we have conducted uh, constructing research with intent uh, next we have conducted another program uh, in collaboration with the ipr cell of our institution idea into patent so we are regularly organizing uh, such useful program for the benefit of our uh, faculty members and this initiative is uh, uh, originated by the idea is originated by our principal i welcome you sir for this uh, wonderful program next i extend my hearty welcome to our renowned chief guest and today's uh, speaker dr janardanan ganga tulasi sir who is uh, the uh, who is working as associate professor and head department of curriculum development nittr uh, department of uh, curriculum development planning and management nittr taramani chennai so sir is going to uh, give uh, a webinar on faculty refresher program for the benefit of uh, faculty fraternity on teaching learning and evaluation and obe perspective so uh, in uh, nat criteria this is the second criterion which is having uh, more uh, impact that is uh, we have to earn more points in this criteria and how we can project ourselves that will be uh, uh, highlighted by our today's speaker i welcome you sir on behalf of our institution next i extend uh, my hearty welcome to uh, dr uh, a g ambujam madam uh, dean vinayaka missions medical college karikal uh, 
who has joined here madam is a, a lively person uh, she is uh, uh, coordinating with the interdisciplinary projects with our institute fusion and uh, uh, she will be giving lot of inputs towards the uh, interdisciplinary projects uh, in collaboration with engineering as well as medical college welcome you madam thank you madam next, uh, next i welcome uh, dr uh, rajan samuel deputy director academics vinayaka missions research foundation uh, sir is looking into this uh, criterion 2 and other uh, uh, criterion in our university perspective welcome you sir for this uh, webinar session next you, i Thank extend you. my hearty welcome to all my faculty colleagues who are going to uh, uh, grab the inputs that is going to be facilitated by our today's guest speaker dr janardhanan sir welcome you sir uh, so next i welcome all of you to this session thank you thank you ma'am a good teacher like a candle it consumes itself to light the way for others one such a great personality now i am inviting dr g selvakumar principal avit to give a presidential address welcome you sir thank you madam very good morning to you all beloved chief guest today dr sunarparan beloved deputy director academics of vinaya mission research foundation team to be university dr rajan samuel uh, beloved uh, dean vinaya mission medical college and hospitals karekal dr ambuja madam and uh, hods of uh, all the departments of uh, avit uh, officials from uh, various sister institutions of uh, vinaya mission research foundation team to be university and faculty members uh, once again i extend a warm welcome to all of you uh, really the avit center for continuing education is doing a wonderful job Uh, as mentioned by uh, dr hema that it was uh, established only 6 months before and uh, this is the fifth program being organized and all the programs are being conducted by inviting eminent personalities uh, one such program is national education policy uh, in which we invited dr shakila t samshu uh, who was the uh, secretary uh, which drafted the committee of the uh, which drafted the national education policy and uh, she was the uh, secretary for the committee so uh, today also we have an eminent person who is the right person to talk about uh, outcome based education dr janardhanan uh, is a wonderful academician and uh, he is from civil engineering background and not only that he is uh, uh, very strong in civil engineering but also in the outcome based education he is an evaluator in the nac process nba and all the ranking processes and in fact he is a resource person for the uh, eight module aict course and he is also a, a resource person for the neet uh, program uh, being introduced recently so we have such a person here to talk about uh, teaching learning and evaluation and obe perspective uh, when dr hema talked about uh, this particular uh, topic she told that uh, it is included in the second uh, criteria and uh, uh, we have to earn more marks so my dear uh, friends please don't uh, see as a, a tool to get more marks uh, we have to adopt the outcome based education as a process in our regular teaching learning process so uh, unless uh, because in you know, 2012 until 2012 Uh, the education system was following a, a teacher centric approach and after that there was a paradigm shift in the uh, teaching learning process and now currently we are adopting the outcome based education which is mainly meant for uh, towards a student centric approach so uh, you, you all the faculty members are aware that uh, the nba has uh, devised uh, 12 graduate attributes which an engineering graduate uh, should uh, possess uh, when he graduate from the engineering institution so these are the 12 skills the student should possess Uh, when he passes out of the engineering institution so the mechanism the teaching learning process should uh, help him in attaining all the skills and uh, that should be a, a feedback mechanism which uh, uh, tries to uh, you know identify the attainment of this uh, uh, 12 attributes and if at all uh, there is some find i mean fault or gap in the uh, delivery process that should be corrected so ob is uh, Uh, basically a, a closed loop system uh, in which we deliver something to the student in a proper way and see that the student attain the expected outcome and if not then uh, necessary corrective measures should be taken so that the future batches you know we try to give a uh, full proof uh, in our teaching learning process and uh, not only that the teaching learning process should be good but also the evaluation the assessment should also be uh, very uh, full proof so in that uh, perspective uh, the faculty members should know the art of uh, asking the questions because we talk about different uh, uh, learning uh, you know levels 
uh, you may be knowing about the Bloom's taxonomy, right? From basic understanding level to uh, synthesis level, there are uh, different uh, learning uh, levels available. And not only that, we impart these levels to the students, but also the questioning method should test the students in all these levels. So uh, to uh, give a broad perspective about this uh, teaching, learning, and evaluation based on the OBE perspective, we have uh, invited uh, uh, my good friend for more than 10 years, uh, Dr. Janathran. In fact, I invited and disturbed him many occasions uh, to deliver uh, topics uh, of this uh, uh, you know, uh, flavor. So he is with us. In fact, I chased him for more than two months uh, to find his date. And today uh, he is with us uh, to talk about uh, this teaching, learning and evaluation process and OBE perspective. I welcome you, sir. On my own behalf, on behalf of the management and uh, the entire officials of uh, Vinayaka Mission's uh, Research Foundation deemed to be university to this program. And uh, I hope this program will be a grand success uh, end of the program, you will uh, come to know more uh, information regarding the outcome-based education. And uh, as I mentioned, it should not be uh, only for the paperwork. It is that we have to adopt outcome-based education as a system uh, so that the students will be benefited. And just for the information of uh, all the members here, that uh, not only in engineering uh, education, even in the medical education, this OBE is introduced recently. Uh, so such is the demand and expectation of the uh, uh, education uh, uh, department that we have to uh, incorporate or uh, include this outcome-based education as a part of the system. And uh, I hope uh, this uh, uh, session will uh, give you more insights about the outcome-based education. And end of the session, uh, there will be more takeaways. I uh, request the faculty members to uh, you know attend this program very seriously. And uh, uh, if at all you have any doubts, you can uh, feel free to ask uh, Dr. Janathanan. And uh, uh, I wish the uh, program all the success. I wish the EPT Center for Continuing Education in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I am requesting Dr. Rajan Samvel, Deputy Director Academics, PMRF, to participate the event. Welcome you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Very good morning to all of you. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes. yes. So, uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, AVIT College uh, for uh, doing uh, wonderful activities, especially after uh, Dr. Selvakumar has taken up. We can see that uh, there is a lot of uh, sphere of activities in all the aspects, academics, community service and all that. So, I congratulate the whole team for uh, all their efforts. And uh, I am uh, happy to invite uh, Dr. Janathanan. Uh, so, uh, we were associated with him recently with an uh, e-content development workshop uh, when the university organized a uh, program for all the faculty of our university. So, welcome you, sir. Uh, nice to see you again. Uh, and uh, now uh, we are definitely in a lot of evolving situation where uh, the role of the teacher is changing, the generation of the students are changing. And again, the environment where academic or learning is taking place is also changing because of the pandemic and other aspects. So we have to adapt and we have to update ourselves. And uh, definitely we need to have a lot of modifications to really go into an outcome-based setup where we critically know that wa what is supposed to be attained has been attained by the uh, student or the graduate. So uh, definitely this is going to be a very useful program. I wish uh, success and uh, I thank the uh, resource person for accepting and uh, uh, our invitation and joining us. Thank you very much, all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I call upon our Dean Ma'am, Dr. Ambujam, Dean VMCC Karika to facilitate the program. Thank you very much, madam, for the invitation given. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate uh, and uh, all the luck uh, to the AVAT team headed by uh, sir, and also the excellent programs uh, conducted by and also planned by AVAT campus is uh, worth listening and worth adopting, not only listening and having uh, as it is being told, for securing marks in NAC, but to, to adapt and to make the students to attain, accept, involve, and dedicate to the society as well as to their future. As Pro, uh, Dr. Rajan Summers rightly pointed out, 
the changing trends uh, in uh, education policy, teacher or attitude and student's attitude, campus attitude, changing is the permanent one and we have to adapt to the changes that is happening around us, not only because of COVID situation, but also the mindset, the generation that has adapted all these things should go a long way for the success of the society, which is going to benefit the community as well. With this, I once again congratulate the team on behalf of Nayaga family at Karekal and good luck to you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, ma'am, for your positive words. Thank you. Now I am requesting our principal, sir, to honor our chief guest with the e-memento. So as a token of appreciation, uh, kindly appreciate and kindly accept our uh, e-memento, sir. Madam, please go ahead. Th thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now the time to introduce our today's chief guest, Dr. Janadhan Kangatulasi. It's my great honor and pleasure to introduce today's guest, Dr. Janadhan Kangatulasi, presently working as Associate Professor and Head, Center for Environmental Management, National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research, Taramani, Chennai. He obtained his undergraduate and postgraduate degree from College of Engineering, Anna University, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. PhD in Civil Engineering, specialization in Geo-Environmental Engineering from University of Illinois, USA. He, has, he is having a good experience in various levels, like he worked as a Geo-Environmental Engineer in USA, worked as lecturer in Department of Civil Engineering, Anna University, Chennai, India. He worked as Teaching Research Associate in Department of Civil Engineering, Anna University, Chennai. He is expertise in many areas like green building technology, water quality management, sustainable development, land use and land cover management, geographical information system, management information system. He is actively involved in organizing and managing a various training program. He conducted 13 international training courses. He trained around 200 international participants, 60 faculty development program, 26 industry training program, conducted 32 IDDS program to many engineering college. In his research contribution, he has published 12 research paper in international journal, 18 international and national conferences he has presented. He published 23 uh, books and technical reports. He guided 18 ME students in faculty of civil engineering at College of uh, Engineering in Gindi campus, Anna University. Released 15 educational resource material as videos. He received fund from various funding agency, nearly rupees 185 lakhs from in the year of 2009 to 2016. His achievements have been recognized by many different awards, including Young Engineering Award in the year of 2021, Fellowship for the Study of Sustainable Development and Role of Technology, and Geotechnical Award for American Society of Civil Engineering. He is also a member in various professional society like member in American Society of Engineering Education, American Society of Civil Engineering, American Society of Society for Testing and Materials, member in Indian Society of Technical Education, a member in Indian Geotechnical Society, member in Solid Base Association of India, and many more. He is uh, doing a lot of professional services uh, like consultancy works in the area of outcome-based education, framing vision and mission, PEO, PO, design for landfill structures, consultancy expertise in geo-environment and civil engineering. He is a, a member in board of study in Periyar Maniyama University, Tanjur, and Tiaraja College of Engineering, Madurai. Doctoral committee member in various universities, a reviewer in many professional society, uh, journals. A executive committee member in Indian Geotechnical Society, Chennai chapter. Sir guided more than 150 project thesis, was guided in the area of sustainable development, green environment, integrated water quality analysis, and technologies for green building, and many more to say about Sir's achievement, but a few only I have mentioned above. John Quincy Adams says that if your action is to inspire others, 
to dream more to learn more to become more you are a leader yes our today's chief guest really inspiring personality now i am inviting today's guest dr janardhan ganga tulasi associate professor head nattr chennai welcome you sir for this session good morning uh, good morning and uh, my humble uh, greetings to all the dignitaries present in the inaugural program and thanks to nirmala madam uh, for the quick uh, uh, thank you sir and for coordinating the program i am very happy to meet professor selva kumar sir because as he told clearly madam and selva kumar sir were keep on asking me to deliver this lecture in person in salem i remember Uh, they were asking can you come over uh, to different places they they were asking but uh, due to various reasons it was getting postponed and uh, we were held up in several uh, other assignments also so which was uh, taking a delay but uh, better late than never today the culmination came to deliver the lecture and i always uh, admire professor uh, selva kumar sir takes a different initiative there ever Uh, the places he has been assigned, I'm having a good touch with him, and uh, from Salem, then Chennai once again, because uh, he, he makes a difference by organizing different events. It is not the question of uh, the knowledge matters; it is the question of how you disseminate the knowledge that matters a lot. He might be aware of certain things, but he, he should have kept it with himself. But he is spreading the message to others. it shows the real uh, outcome or commitment what he possess to the system because suppose if we go to any abroad different places we uh, taste some chocolates or some uh, different items food items we wish to bring the same item to our family members let them also taste the same thing generally we do it uh, so the same manner wherever suppose we might have come across with some faculty member delivering lecture in certain topics immediately we will try to bring them to the college where he is associated and uh, try to spread the message to everyone and uh, i thank nirmala madam and the entire team and today before starting the lecture let me uh, conduct a small uh, penty uh, to just check uh, how the participants are there and let me share the screen before that i will share the penty link in the chat box i request the participants chat box i am putting it in the chat box you just click it you just click it you will uh, come across this menti let me share the screen the entire screen let me share it okay uh selva kumar sir used one word you remember after some time we all moved to a student centric approach previously we were in teacher centric approach Uh, but uh, that's a question of debate to be frank at the time number of learners uh, uh, were less the teachers were also less loaded less distracted less uh, uh, expectation from the administration now like a marketing agency company the faculty members also have been given a different target you have to take class you have to publish papers you have to bring grant you have to do this you have to do that you have to do this various assignments have been provided so they have to keep chasing over a period of time they will ask but we have to see what is the difference what exists now which was not there previously they were calling it as an output based education currently we are following outcome based education output and outcome by the terminology should change output and outcome because i was going to pune uh, not pune sorry nasik nasik because uh, i was going to a university in nasik uh, for delivering an, uh, for academic auditing for academic auditing we were traveling to nasik uh, one of the very famous university the government asked us to because from the government side we were going for academic auditing so from mumbai we have to travel to nasik i was traveling with one of my Uh, professional colleague we both were traveling from mumbai to nasik but when we are traveling uh, generally i have been already there last year also same uh, i have been twice to the same college because uh, for the same purpose academic auditing 
So I know generally how much time it takes for me to travel. Two to three hours, three hours to three and a half hours, we can reach Nasik by road because the roads are very good. The roads are expressway, three to four hours, not more than that. But one instance every day because sometimes we get on an evening flight from Air India. From there by night I go there. Night so that I will sleep next day morning fully will do. The day, day after next day we will start living from the, the morning afternoon so that we reach the airport by evening. So that is the trend we generally had. So but once when we started, uh, the you, because of one some traffic violation of some other vehicle, it took more than eight to nine hours for me to reach the Nasi. I reached the midnight around uh, maybe three o'clock, two, 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 after two or three when I reached. It was a hectic journey for us. Because of the mistake made by one vehicle, the entire things have been toppled. So to put the meaning of real meaning of output and outcome, I'm telling this example. Previously also we were taking license. When we take license to make him deem to be fit to a better driver, a good driver, you are an eligible driver, qualified driver to drive the vehicle in the roads. <coughs> that was the statement. Uh, 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 you, you are eligible driver, uh, eligible dri uh, driver or qualified driver to uh, ride uh, ride the vehicles in the road. That was the thing license. But now also the people are getting license, but are they eligible drivers? They are getting license, but are they riding properly? That is a question mark. Where the mistake makes the same system. But if you observe in US, uh, because why I'm quoting, because I spent a good decent amount of years, maybe five years I've spent there. So that's the reason. Other countries, when we go, we can go by maybe hardly more than three months. I never stayed in other countries. <coughs> but here, good. So where I have seen taking a license is not easiest task. Here I have seen the people, we go three, four people will sit together. Uh, you drive a little bit, you drive a little bit, you drive a little bit. The final, the people will get the license. There, the examiner and examinee one-to-one -one relationship. And we have to make a big move and everything. Uphill drive, parking, downhill parking, all, all combination. More than 45, 50 minutes. A very rigorous a testing procedure to make you call to exam to, for the examination and to tell whether you are qualified or not. That's a very system is very well established system. But previously also the drivers were, the prices were given. Now also drivers were given. At the time, the people were less. The people are less, the vehicles are less. The people are more conscious and everything, but no the, conscious. So the outcome, even though when they possess the license, that is a degree certificate, but they doesn't possess the good driving skill. Some or other, they have been qualified. That is the problem what exists in the education system also. They have been given a degree certificate, but they lack a certain technical nuances which they should possess. That is a big problem which we face in the current day scenario. So in such situation, there need to be some gap to bridge what they learn and what they exhibit. They learn something, but they exhibit something. Otherwise, are we teaching what they need to possess in the society? That's a big question mark now. Are, are we doing or fine-tuning accordingly to uh, whether they possess what they exactly need to serve in the society, to survive in the society? That's a big question mark. So, uh, okay, fantastic visuals, uh, motivation. Okay, skilled perpetual motor act. You were told it student-centric approach as it's needed. Procedural knowledge and factual is, okay, no need. It should be other way. Okay, fantastic, sir. 18 people are active. Okay. And okay, why it is showing you are reaching the end of the presentation? Actually, there were three questions. I kept it. My goodness. Oh, oh. I didn't put this the first question. Okay. Okay. The first question is this the first question. Order the list as per the importance to improve the education system. Because when you want to have adopt outcome-based education system, you might have felt it. Uh, there might be some lacuna with the system. If there is no lacuna in the system, why we need to think about improve the system? 
Okay, because everything is going perfect, we never think about improving. Only when some when anything when anything is misplaced or not in appropriate, then only we think about the improving the education system. So, as per your perspective, kindly rank the list as per the importance. So now, for me, the purpose is to provide the education. Then it improves the education system. So you, you may be having a different. So I request the participants to be uh, receptive in answering it, please. Uh, I know you guys are busy. Around 85 participants are there, but I'm getting a response only from 18 participants. I don't know what is their problem. Very simple problem. I'm just putting it to the menti.com. You just click the link or go to menti.com, use the code 69260859. Use the code and try to participate in the poll. As you all are learning is not the product of teaching. Learning is the product of the activity of the learners. Learning is a product of the activity of the learners. So you should be aware it is not the product of teaching. Learning is a product of the activity of the learners. Okay, someone has put something in the chat. Let me see. Done, sir. Done, sir. Need active participation from all. Yes. See, Salva Kumar Sarah has told. Eh? Need active participation. Finish, sir. Nirmala, madam, immediately told to finish, sir. Muthu Selvan done. Okay, good, good. Very good, very good. Completed, sir. 17 people, 18 people. Last question also, 18, we received this. Sir. Okay, teach them the purpose of education. Amazing, amazing. One of the crux or pivotal point of outcome-based education is teach them the purpose. If they know the purpose, it is easy for them to build the castle. If they don't know the purpose, it's like building the castle on the air. It will not make them a perfect uh, uh, engineers or technologists or a better citizen. That is the main purpose, correct? They should know what for they are doing, why they are doing. Because certain things we do without knowing the purpose or reason. That is a uh, reason for the flaw of several issues. Because we simply uh, do it. We don't know what, what, why we have to do, what, what, what is the reason and what is the need for it. We don't know. For example, we drive the vehicle in the left-hand side in India, but in US, we drive in right-hand side. Why it has to be different? Why the plant has to grow in this direction? Why the plant? Why the snail should go, form a spherical? Why the cyclone should form a spherical? Something it happens. Why it happens? We don't know. But we might have learned those concepts in our engineering. Obviously, we learned. But we fail to connect what we have learned. That is very, very important. We fail to connect what we have learned. Why it should happen? What is the reason? Why the proportion of everything in the nature is different? It has been prefixed. What is the reason behind it? So emulating from the nature is very, very important. So that's the need of the other. Amazingly, the people told, teach them the purpose of education. So that's important. The students should know why they are doing this activity. If they didn't know, what is the reason behind it? Yes, of course. Since the medical campus is there, I will tell you, 
we have uh, some doctors I have seen, amazing doctors. Our doctor, Badmashri Shivaraman said, uh, he was a family doctor. So the way in which he touches the ear uh, near the stomach, teaches pain, okay, you have got infected with malaria, you have to do it. And he, with just two fingers, he touches here and he tells, okay, it seems like appendix. Appendicitis. It's just you have to get operated. When we do all the scanning, appendicitis is not observed. We told up, no, 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 it is starting stage. You have to do it. It is the right time. Uh, vomit sensation. Yes, when we did, it was appendicitis. You remember the doctors of I have seen Esther years, very amazing with just two fingers, three fingers. They do the diagnostic like anything because they know the purpose of the things. You remember, they know the purpose. These days, somehow we are following the westernized system, I observed. But I will tell you one instance. In US, when I was having uh, working on the field uh, during the winter, I had a severe force bread and everything. I got infected and I had a severe fever. At the time, an university farmer registered professor. Kumar sir was a visiting professor at the University of Illinois. He was staying with me. I had a very severe fever. When he called the hospital, they said in the scale of 1 to 10, rate your pain. We got irritated. In India, when we get sick, immediately we go to doctor. But there we have trained the skin. Then we took everything. They gave some tablet. It was not cured. The next day morning, I was amazed. The Professor Kumar, he blasted the doctor like anything. Because what happens there, before you go, the nurse check all the BPs, stethoscope, everything she does and does. Only he just reads the reports and does it. The way on which the personal touch and... Because I have seen the doctors here. Because the doctor uh, name is... I don't, okay, I don't want to advertise the names, but what about yes, a stethoscope? He gives which the stethoscopes, he diagnoses like anything. The diagnostic is very well because they know the purpose, because they're they're simply like a machine, they are doing it. That's the reason the westernized culture of insurance, everything. Now everything has been increased. Some of we try to follow the Western culture. That's whether are we going in the right direction or wrong direction? It's a question of debate. Okay, but the first and foremost is amazingly you have told. Teach them the purpose of education. In outcome-based education, fundamental is teach their purpose. What for their learning? It should be a student-centric. Where the students centric means what the students needed, we should not teach. The students should know the purpose of what they are learning, why they are learning, what is the importance. Because we have used the term complex, complex, complex. Are we really providing a complex system in our system? That's a big question. Yes, of course, second is good technology. Then if you want to have a teach the purpose, if you want to have technology, the best answer is correct. The training of educators is needed, which ABIT and your group is doing amazingly good. And finally, the personalized education and then later on everything. Okay. So this is the second part. We got it. And the last question to just check. When you have started, okay, everyone started answering, all right, teaching, only during pandemic. Okay. If you observe the first question answered by uh, let's be, first question, 36 people you have answered. Uh, the last question, 22 people. Let me see how many people are answering because okay, everyone goes to the wall. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Before pandemic, three people predominantly or during pandemic. Amazing, amazing. Pandemic gave us several good things to us. You remember, we had opportunity to spend time with our family members. Such opportunity we might have never got in our life. You remember, even when you go outing, we will be very much busy in going to the outside sightseeing. By the time when we spend together, it will be hardly less. Here, yeah, it is a nature's gift to every humanity. 
spend maximum time with you carry your neighbors very very important <laughs> if your neighbor is having covid then you will be in trouble that was the situation so all are sharing the tips take ginger take this thing and enjoying the with family members taking your food at all the time together breakfast together lunch together dinner together and recollecting our childhood games with the family members which we never had a chance you remember some of we were hooked to avoid the nuisances and everything negative uh, thought process we were watching movies and everything ott platform become very good you remember we started enjoying the homemade bhajis vadas everything and watching the tvs and uh, doing pranayam exercises everything together during covid surendra babu sir and ashok kumar sir muttu selvan sir yes so it provided a different perspective a different thought process ultimately to us so it also empowered i am very much i will tell you the 2020 january the first first of january i am in ahmedabad for a, a meeting for a, a, this thing how the technology education at the time the ndp was just implemented draft came so the chapter 19 we were working on it how to improve the a technology infusion in this there was a meeting there before, uh, so i went to there because ahmedabad the next day i have to be in bopa so so when we were we were thinking and we were making some rubrics we were creating some charts everything one of the committee member told it is over uh, uh, hypothetical you cannot make the fa- all the faculty members take save by 2025 it takes more than 2040 that was a statement made by the expert we were arguing no sir at least 20 30 we can make it we told you are all youngsters so you guys think from your perspective you just think from the senior faculty perspective all country as a different everything all what are the possible uh, disadvantages so that to roll out a technology to the entire country he was listing like anything it is obviously it's correct from his perspective but march 23 we got a strike of pandemic eh? so but when we did the review in september through online predominant 95% of the faculty members in our country they are the frontline warriors in taking education without having a disruption in the education you remember they were continuously doing online education teaching i still remember uh, in the month of april or may itself i think april or may i don't know maybe may may june may june maybe Uh, selva kumar was asking me for online lecture uh, to the university where he was attached i was wondering i said so early no no no, no sir everything because you remember march by may or june i forgot maybe may june maybe at the most because may we were just desk- giving lectures to other countries but uh, that was the initial uh, uh, inception itself we started adopting the this thing our now by the time most of our faculty members 100% of our faculty members or one way or other way they have been exposed to the teaching with technology it shows the commitment of our faculty members so that is a commitment which is a really gave abundance learning opportunity yes sir yes yes sir a lot of learning opportunities have been provided and we have been connected we have been expand given a scope to expand our other skill sets other thought process that is amazing amazing okay just a warm up only i was doing it because i have come to the paint picture so just i was warm up and i thank the participants because around 37 participants were active but unfortunately the second question i had only 35 i thought i will have more than 37 because when when we go to the next question obviously we'll have a more number but somehow here the dip comes maybe there might be some fluctuation but no problem it's well appreciated i appreciate the team so the main lecture now is teaching learning and evaluation the nexus how what for they have been connected from the perspective of outcome based education as i told you output based education and outcome based education there is a subtle difference our license examination i have told as example previously less number of people the vehicles are less the people are not that much they were so outcome based education itself are providing the outcome where showing trying to show the outcome but now what happened the more the participants are there more the learners are getting certified but uh, they are not meeting the demand which has been created by the 
industries or academicians that we have to relook into it from a different perspective so that is a very very important because that's a need of the ever that is a important aspect because previously we were trying to meet the demand So in this lecture, the content expressed are purely my technical perspective. It does not represent the organization to which I am affiliated. So put it in the best way of outcome-based education. I will tell you this is the example. If I draw it, what is outcome-based education? The learning is fixed. The learning is fixed. But the learning time varies. Learning time. That's a definition provided by Professor Spaddy in his book. Learning is fixed. Learning time varies. How the outcome-based education came? Because the commission in US, they are framing, forming a committee under the leadership of SPADI to look into redefining the school education, to redefine the school education to meet the demands, to meet the demands. That was the initial thing they were trying to keep it because how to improve the school education system, education system. That was the main thought process. If you observe, the learning is fixed, the learning time based because the Russian releases the satellite known as a Sputnik. When the Russian launched the short note Sputnik, the US people got a little bit terrified. Uh, oh, these people are doing it. What we will do how to go about it? That created a turmoil and then they started doing. So if you see, even though learners are presumed to get admission to the uh, colleges, they are not of same level. There exists some difference in level of learning. So this pencil will take more time to reach the learning fix. Whereas this pencil will still take more time. But this pencil will take less time. Where the outcome-based education, the learning is fixed, but learning time varies. Why the learning time varies? To accommodate the individual difference, to accommodate the individual difference, learning time varies. To accommodate the individual difference, learning time varies. Accommodate the individual difference. Individual difference need to get acknowledged. Individual difference need to get acknowledged. Individual difference need to be appropriately given a due respect. Individual difference need to get acknowledged. Individual difference need to get acknowledged. Individual difference need to be respected. The great teachers are made, not just born. Only thing we should be ready in the journey. Quickly, I will try to cover. So in the general, in normal education system, we have the question mark of, are you qualified? That's a question which we'll ask. Are you qualified? Are you qualified? But we have to remember, in outcome-based education, the fundamental crux is, there is no question of, are you qualified? The question is, all are qualified. All are qualified. All are qualified. There is no question of, are you qualified? There is the question of, all are qualified. All are qualified. So in the normal education scenario, you might have come across these sorts of tables and chairs, which really creates uh, issues, which really creates issue where if you observe, the tables are scribbled, the students scribbles like anything. But why they are scribbling? Because they're bored in the learning environment. They're bored in the learning environment. So there need to be some nexus between the way in which we teach, the way in which we learn, the way in which we evaluate. Because, but in the problem-based learning, what we call, based on the evaluation pattern, only the per person's learning take place. If you're learning like this, the students will learn like that. If you want the students to learn differently, you change the pattern of evaluation. Don't ask them to irritate. Them. Change the pattern of evaluation. By default, the person uh, way of learning will change. Since you have made approach of this sort of evaluation, obviously the learning is going to fit to the evaluation pattern. If you want to have a perfect ev evaluation, if you want to redefine the learning process, then redefine the evaluation process. That is very important to us. Let us together explore how the future education will be there because how the nexus exists, the teaching, learning, and evaluation exists, how it exists, we'll see. But one thing we have to understand, the students are completely blindfolded in learning. What do they mean by blindfolded in that? Blindfolded in the learning basically involves uh, the students are completely blindfolded in the learning and they, they, we have to think because they are towards the mark oriented. Mark, 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 mark oriented. That is an important aspect. But where is the key? Key is our the approach, the teaching, learning process, 
that is the approach which you have to remember but you remember any university system any education systems the we have to remember the accredited institutions will be there not accredited institutions also will be there we presume accredited institutions as a good quality knowledge is provided and some might also facilitate them to get a job both from the national market and international market that is advantage of accreditation system so we presume the accreditation system provides a better quality knowledge and also it provides a good job that is a that is a aspect So one new thing we have to remember: Are we doing old thing in a new way, or is it a new thing in a new way? But we have to remember: When it comes to outcome-based education, it is the most important time to be in the education, most important time to take care about the education, most important time to impact the education. The ultimate truth is: It is impossible to redesign students to fit into a system, but we can redesign a system for the students. that redesign is nothing but outcome based education it is impossible to redesign students to fit into a system but we can redesign a system for students but we can redesign a system for students it is impossible to redesign to students to fit into a system but we can redesign a system for students but if you see the national education policy 2020 it clearly tells the quality of university and higher education need to be for, for forward looking and futuristic in that case we have to adopt the system which is held established in the developed countries and it needs institutional restructuring and consolidation is also it is a need of the hour and it should also encourage and motivate the energize the young capable faculty members encourage motivate the faculty members so that effective governance at leadership for higher education institution higher education institution but one such process is accreditation accreditation is one such process in the accreditation we nowadays we believe it is purely based on outcome based education outcome based education but in reality in india uh, because we are asking in one of the institution before pandemic i was asking uh, what sort of education the system lies in india there were several answers but one of the unique answer which still i cherish still i admire is in india we have only income based education sir i was laughing to the core but it is not the question to be law of answer to be law it is a answer to be introspected yes in india we have a income based education if you have a good income you will get admission to the good institute if you don't have a good income you don't have admission to the good institute but there are some good institutions they are giving fellowship motivates but one way or other way income also plays an important role in getting a quality education so now the debate is are we working with the output based education or income based education or outcome based education but we believe it is a purely outcome based education what is not because sometimes when it goes to accreditation or outcome based education we believe someone has given something in chat with us and yes yes <laughs> so it is accreditation or uh, nothing to find fault with the institution not to degrade their working style is your working style is good we want to bring you to the sub good level not to demarcate the boundary of the quality not to select only the institutions of national excellence but it has to be provided with everyone so that is a mindset which we have that is a mindset which we presumed to have that is a mindset which we wish to have. so that is the purpose of but uh, as uh, uh, madam was mentioning sir was mentioning the criteria two is very very important teaching learning process yes teaching learning process it is very important it is not working from the criteria perspective it is working from the holistic generic perspective that we have to remember in outcome based education what students need to learn 
are we reducing the syllabus or are we going to dilute the system or what way we are going to work on it so uh, but we have to remember the curricular design need to fit to the delivery mechanism already the university is fitting a system now we are working on a new curricular model uh, which we started implementing in kerala now where i don't want to change the curricula for every year because in the name of curriculum revision are we really doing justice that's a question which you have to answer naked truth we have to speak frankly speaking in college of engineering in the anna university the syllabus what i studied in the year 1996 for soil mechanics still the same syllabus exists 2022 not only for that subject several subjects then are we not making a mockery of a system by changing the number c240 to c320 c210 changing third semester subject to fourth semester subject fourth semester subject to third semester subject only we are doing a gimmick work why we are not accommodating the new content in the syllabus previously soil has been built in a different perspective now soil is polluted are the students are learning that thing no not at all then we will take extra credit subjects you remember not only from soil civil engineering because is basically i am civil engineering i am very much uh, happy to uh, ex exhibit the naked truth what exists there so we have to remember where exactly we stand where exactly we stand is it a curriculum mistake or is it a teaching learning problem in curriculum every time we have industry representative we have academicians we have but are we critically reviewing ourselves it is like a get together meeting where we praise it is wonderful super good and praise and and because one of the meeting in kerala i was attending our faith faith so i was very open nakedly i was telling the truth and one of the good mentor of many told janardan said the things you should not tell openly if you tell keep telling openly next time onwards they will not call you for revision who is going to be the last i told i am not going to be working coming for this uh, uh, this thing it's not the question of money it's a question of commitment what we exhibit sir so is it a naked truth we have to accept because the syllabus remains the same are the syllabus are meeting the needs of the students are they trying to ignite their minds kindle their passion where it exists why we have to have the nam ke was curriculum revision but when the curriculum revision is there integrate the curriculum revision in according to the the, uh, the graduate attributes in each subject try to include some modern tool usage why you are not using it in subject now because the anger for model clearly tells either you should follow the diffusion model or infusion model if you try to follow the diffusion model sometimes it might be successful it may not be successful but infusion model 99% success rates are there but still we are not admitting the infusion model i was wondering because previous generation people are very good in writing the draft letters writing the letters everything but the current generation people are not good in writing the letter or report or papers everything the reason is but still we have a paper of soft skills paper for research writing when we keep a paper as audit paper the paper doesn't have the value at all it is a concept of a diffusion model diffusion model under ford model itself they are telling it is not worth improve as an infusion model include the paper writing research component in each paper are we finding a soft skills in any of the us university papers not at all why in india we are th 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 trusting that thing to survey a few soft skill companies because you see any us syllabus university of florida or university of california or university of perd university there is no unique soft skills courses exhibits you remember in the course itself because you might tell they are english speaking people so they are good in writing letters and good in not like that sir the question of inculcating the research this thing infusion model is predominantly a successful model adopted worldwide some more the aict made the system because i always wonder aict started lot of engineering colleges and spoiled the engineering education in the country no lot of training programs at all now they are spoiling the training system they operate in a swiggy model it is swiggy or ola uber model but it is not the system based model that is why the national education policy categorically puts very rightly they they, they are working on the uh, only one regulatory authority ugc and aict okay coming to the main problem
There are 10 graduate attributes, other engineering knowledge, problem analysis, design development of solution, investigation, modern tool usage, engineering and society, environment sustainability, ethics, individual teamwork, communication, project management, and lifelong learning. How to improve everything or how to include everything into the system. That is the main problem which you have to worry. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, that, 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 is, that, is a, that is a that is a big problem because how to improve because when you want to improve the teaching learning and evaluation how to include all those items accordingly because instead of keeping a piecemeal concept how to make it that's a big debate so outcome based education is not what we teach it basically revolves on what you learn or what the students learning that is the outcome based education so it is not, it's rational, it's a learner-centric approach to tertiary education. That's school from school education, tertiary, it's work. And if you see outcome-based education, it focuses on what the students can do and the qualities they should develop after they have been taught. Once I have taught a laboratory exam, which is still people are cheating and copying in the examination. Once a professional ethics subject is there, in professional ethics subject itself, they are copying in the examination where the professional ethics exist. We did it one survey in Vijayawada, very, very famous college, very, very famous college, which was selected for the SIC and uh, OB accreditation when the foreign team came. Only few institutions have been selected, that college. When we conducted a survey with the students, what are the different ways to cheat the teachers during examination? We did one three days workshop there for question paper setting. Myself and Professor Shivakumar, we were doing it. Well, when we did, we did some question survey. We want to show how the structured question paper will leave the paradigm shift in the mark. It was a workshop. So we made the exercises. We asked the students to do the exercises and come and show it so that they know the real value. If you teach it, not, it's not the question of preaching. It is a question of preaching which will have value only when you reach it. So we made them to work on it. So we made the students collected what are the different ways to cheat the teachers in the examination. Amazingly answers came. Amazingly answers came. Are they quality which we are teaching it? Not, but still they are learning it. OB involves complete restructuring of curriculum. The assessment. As I told you, the students, if you want to change the students' learning pattern, change the assessment pattern. That is what discussed in the National Education Policy 2020, Parak, where the 360 degree of evaluation, where student self-evaluation, student to student evaluation, student to teacher evaluation, and student to self-evaluation, peer evaluation, parent evaluation, complete 360 degree. So restructuring of curriculum and assessment, reporting the practice in education to reflect the achievements of higher order learning or mastery rather than the accumulation of course credits. It's a question of what you exhibit rather than what you accumulate. That is the reason we divide the subjects into three different categories. Knowledge acquisition, knowledge deepening, and knowledge creation. This is what we call it as a different level of courses. In now we are trying to implement that code of studies. You remember, 200 level course, 300 level course, and 400 level course. The 400 level course, even the master students can take it. It's a master's level course of base. So it's a question of knowledge acquisition first. Knowledge creation, deep, deepening, then knowledge creation. So this is the way the hierarchy, the system works. Then the students will exhibit all sorts of skills they can learn it. But unfortunately or fortunately, we make most of the subject as a knowledge acquisition skill. Like a library they are acquisitioning, that is not going to yield the intended outcomes that we have to remember. So outcome-based education basically focus on revolving, restructuring, and re uh, restructuring the system. Uh, uh, restructuring the system. Both structures and curricula are designed to achieve those capabilities and qualities. That is important. So together, you have to be very strong enough to bring out the thing. Discourage traditional approach based on direct instruction of facts and standards. So discourage, that is the only thing. They are not asking you to avoid because bygarting or rote learning is not a sin. Rote learning is needed in certain aspects where 
but by hearting is needed but by heart by knowing the meaning that is the purpose which lies because if you learn any words or any sentence if you learn the sentence with the meaning ai aindum aindum ariyada maanidarai what slok what purpose stands is there in tamil ai aindum aindum what they mean by ai aindum aindum what exactly because it means the 30 stanzas they put it in a very different ai aindum 5 into 5 25 25 plus 5 is 30 so if you remember the stanzas with the meaning you will never forget the stanzas that is the important so it is not the question of a rote learning it is a question of the learning by knowing the meaning which will exhibit the students to practice or implement in a appropriate manner so it requires the students to demonstrate the skills that learn so ultimately if you observe it provides the students a little attention whether students learn the material for that example only when vinayaka mission we were conducting e content program i told the software like get puzzle padlet and h5p a uh, uh, video hand these are some softwares which we are discussing where we were focusing more on the items of uh, what this how the students learn the material and to monitor how they learn the material and the students have given great mark and compared to the exam oriented and cgp driven and not completely prepared for the workforce we have to look into it so but communication skills interpersonal skills analytical skills but you have to remember because in one of the uh, 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 because in kerala they accept it that's the reason i, I put kerala as example so we were discussing uh, what happened the students have been asked question uh, answer about ohms law in english most of the students they made a mistake they didn't explain what is ohms law so immediately the complete committee came into a conclusion the ohms law the students didn't write because they didn't have a good english knowledge if they possess a good english knowledge it will be good they can exhibit the ohms law in a better manner that was a inference based on the study but that is absurd inference i will tell you but we didn't check whether the students really understood the ohms law or not what we think since he is not telling it properly it means he doesn't possess a communication skill so include communication skill as one of the paper when you include communication skill one of the paper he will be in the position to tell ohms law but the fundamental flaw flaw is he doesn't know what is ohms law he didn't understand what is ohms law he didn't understand what is darcy's law i have seen in one academic audit when i went to anna university they have asked the question what is darcy's law what answer you expect from the students if a students write like this da la written by darcy is darcy's law it is 100% correct you have to give mark you cannot tell it is wrong answer no you ask the question what is darcy's law a law written by darcy is known as darcy's law 100% correct you should have written a question define darcy's law so the problem in outcome based education implementation is not the question of the content the question of how the content has been orchestrated orchestrated orchestration because different musical instruments are there only if you orchestrate properly the music perfect music comes so it is not the question of uh, the content it is a question of how the content has been conducted so finally they thought okay since he doesn't possess a good communication he doesn't know ohms law but that not the question he didn't understand the ohms law so that unfortunately unfortunately the things have been put in a different perspective so employer because it's a 2012 20, not to 12 but if you observe there are communication because he doesn't know how to write or speak he is shy why is not shy because he didn't have a courage or gut uh, active because he doesn't have possess a content knowledge you remember you see the people who are very strong in the content they never worry about their communication they will be happy to express whatever they feel because they strong in the belief but what happened unfortunately fortunately we people are always connecting uh, the, because we are not good in content that is the reason we are good poor in this thing so we have to be very careful so honesty team work interpersonal skills motivation flexibility analytical skills computer skills organizational skills detail oriented leadership skills self confidence friendly outgoing personality well mannered polite tactfulness gpa the subject gpa 
creativity, sense of humor, and entrepreneurship. So these are the items which we, when the survey result yielded, so uh, they thought, okay, the company CGP is only at the bottom, so we don't need to worry much. Other skills you have to worry, mm -hmm. but we have to remember if the students is good in the content knowledge. By default, you will have a good analytical skills, good communication skills. If I am strong in the content, I never worry because you remember at the young age, the students will be very bold enough to exhibit the skill set. Uncle, you see me, I am driving cycle like this. Uncle, you see me, I am doing the juggler act like this. They will be very strong enough. If you are strong in some skill set, you will be very active in exhibiting the skill set. That's the nature's beauty. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we are not thinking from that perspective. We are not thinking from that perspective. We are not thinking from the perspective. Uh, So the focus and benefits OB address basically what the students will be able to do at the end of the graduation, how we can help the students to achieve it for our teaching methodology, how we have know whether the students have achieved it by means of our assessment and how do we close our loop for the improvement by checking with the teaching process, teaching, learning, assessment, the loop need to have it. Selva Kumar sir was mentioning this loop has to be checked properly during his inaugural felicitation address. So what the students will be able to do, how can best students achieve it, how we will know whether the students have achieved it, how do we close the loop for further improvement, the continuous quality improvement. And then we have to see the benefits of OB. It is more directed and uh, this thing. Graduates will be relevant. Graduates will be relevant to uh, this thing. Uh, So graduates will be relevant and continuous quality improvement. We have to. So we rather than memorize and reproduce what they thought, they should be right the push and write proposals, complete projects, case studies. The boys movie, the Sendal would have told information as well. It is hundred percent correct because last week I was watching a, a interview from one of the eminent institute. The students are very active in some uh, colleges. The students are not active in some college, but they are also active in other areas. Only thing which they have to trigger, it's not appropriate. If you trigger, then obviously we can bring them to main course of time. So we have to ask them to work in it. Then, and obviously, if you see in the outcome-based education, the focus is on going to be the learning outcomes, the program outcomes, program educational out objectives, and mission and mission. You have to remember. Here we use the term objectives, here we use the term outcomes. Outcomes are measurables, measurables which you can visualize. Objectives, what I intend to do. For example, I, I intend to, for medical college people, I tell you, I, my intention is to teach them how to use this at the scope. That is the objective of the teacher from the teaching perspective. Or because program educational objectives from the university or college perspective. Program outcome is, or learning outcome is, what you expect the students to possess at the end of the learning. What do you expect the students to possess at the end of the learning? That is a program outcome. Long-term and short-term outcomes in interrelated and complement each other. So if you observe upon students' completion, upon graduation, few years after graduation. So in outcome-based education, what we have to do, what are the criteria? For example, in the most of the cases, and we are use Washington Accord because our NBA focus basically on Washington Accord. So we work on Washington Accord. Uh, so the uh, uh, it is identify, formulate. It the word complex, complex will be there in all the graduate attributes of the uh, NBA uh, students. Uh, if you was if you see complex, complex. What do you mean by complex? I will tell you next. But you remember, it's a first principle of mathematics and engineering says we are using it. In the case of uh, technologies, we they broadly define engineering problems where analytical tools are appropriate. But in the case of a technician education, we have to be very clear, well-defined well -defined engineering problems. 
the diploma students can work only on the well defined engineering problems reaching substantiated conclusion using codified method of analysis to the specific field of activity already the activities have been given already the specification has been given so we have to work in accordance to that that category we have to work in accordance to that category. you have to work in accordance to that category that is the need of the that is the need of the hour which you have to work we have to work okay so if you see in depth of analysis the complex problem if you observe i have no obvious solution require abstract thinking originality in analysis to formulate the suitable models but well defined problem is can be solved in a standardized way so one of the meeting we have observed one expert was mentioning we don't want to develop our engineers at least in the complex problem let them be solve the problem in a standardized way they doesn't know how the road has to be constructed because one of the smart city meeting when we were attending it was clearly mentioned you remember the road things are known as a guidelines irc guidelines whereas the codal provisions are the is 456 is 800 if you violate the code you are liable to prosecution but if you violate the guideline you are not liable to prosecution it is only a guideline to be followed you can deviate you can less you can make more it's just a guideline that you have to remember but codal is provision is compulsory statutory requirement so but our students are not even in the position to work on the standardized way that's a big debate which you have to remember so the it's a question of complex problem are we making or let me make the students to work in a well defined problems why we have to follow the western culture because western culture now in our curriculum revision i am bringing one certificate program pg diploma where we are talking in terms of decolonization of curriculum decolonization of curriculum some or other <laughs> we have been influenced by the western thought process we have been made to look only from their perspective this you can see from the bagubali movie itself you remember bagubali movie when you watch amendra uh, first bagubali and second bagubali the previous bagubali will be very short second bagubali was not that much short when kattappa will teach this is way your father works you remember but what happened over a period of time we for, we forgot that how our people are very good in making a such a wonderful tank in jaipur the power will no one can beat our ampi our pragadeshwar temple how they were made the architectural marvel as they were making engineering aspects how they were making to grind the some buried i uh, 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 strong rocks what mechanism or technology they were having it but we have been made to think from the colony station because western yeah, Uh, from perspective itself, this is the way the education goes. This is the way the learning goes. This is the way the things goes. Nothing like that. The learning goes only by inquiry-based learning. By default, from the womb, when we are there, from my mother's womb, I have the thought of inquiry. That is the reason Parishit Maharaj came. Parishit, why the name Parishit came? He had the habit of questioning, questioning, questioning. In outcome-based education, you have to remember. the students inquisit habit of questioning need to be inculcated so that our fine tuning our teaching in appropriate direction to answer that question that becomes a learning in terms we are going to do the assessment that is a very simple task so where we have to have the by nature we have the questioning why it happened like this what is the reason for happening why that happens if you solve in a perfect manner then the decolonization of curriculum takes in a different perspective so the teaching staff curriculum lab and other resources teaching and learning is a process and students at graduation but you are remember we examine through exams test and assessment but now you can do a capstone projects community projects community projects where the students need to work on a community i have seen one of the college in tanja where they are working a community scheme to construct a toilet for the civil engineering students because the students are good in learning how to do it but they don't know a, a what way to do it they know the procedure but they don't know the concepts so they know how, i know how to do it but by knowing how to do it doesn't matter because by watching a video i can learn how to do it the procedure i can learn but i can learn the real learning take place only when we act upon it act upon it so that is the reason so the teaching staffs the process 
outcome shortcut and fulfill the graduation this thing and what are the requirements of stakeholders that is it so if you want to make the loop perfect you have to remember the objectives and outcomes and learning outcomes properly need to have the assessment assessment need to sit as i told you the inquiry based approach will inculcate the knowledge of uh, good learning the teacher need to answer the inquiry and finally that should serve as a purpose of assessment because our students have become an answering machine rather than becoming a questioning skills you remember we inhibited their questioning skills the students are good in answering if you ask questions they will answer if you ask questions they will know how to solve it they forgot the habit of questioning to inculcate that is a need of the hour and that is the improvement in continuous quality improvement you have to remember what they want what you say let them prove it and let them improve it it is that so to prove i am to prove so which is that i have improved so i am there to prove it so i will improve upon it so say what you did and what do you want to say so ultimately you have to see as a teachers you have to review your pos and pos and course structures and syllabus relevant mathematics and engineering subjects and conduct tutorials and laboratory sessions where the projects and empirical ways to connect it and appropriately you have to see the engineering accreditation council or nb are taking it according to the continuous quality improvement so how we have to improve the current generation kids are completely digital natives they are not digital immigrants in 2005 in pope benedict when he was delivering lecture everyone were listening to the lecture in 2013 when pope francis was delivering he even started recording it and taking photograph when any god procession comes previously we were taking because we became came to that vinayaka mission there are a lot of shivalingas were there uh, myself and my colleague came we were worshiping my colleague immediately started taking more photographs i was asking what you are doing in the temple by taking photographs no no it will be a good memory for me. i told a good memory comes by good way of involvement when you love and you have a passion towards this thing you are because you see your grandma your grandfather or your uh, some elders they cherish their memories how come they cherish the memories because that time the camera was not there your mind was a better camera but now what happened after taking a photograph i'm pretty sure after 2 3 years he might have deleted the photograph because he doesn't memory space will become maybe or he might have not have the habit of correcting the checking the photographs so if you want to live in the presence that is a crux of ob so the, but millennial assume technology is a part of tool everything but you have to remember the three facts in ob what student learn is always less than what we teach so that is ultimate fact number 1 what they learn is also determined by native ability background of the course motivation of the course match between the learning style and teaching style in such situation when we work on it when we work accordingly we have to remember native ability background in the course topic motivation of taking course and match between the learning style and teaching cell but we cannot do with the ability i cannot do already they have possess the ability i cannot change their motivation i cannot change their background i cannot change the learning cell only thing i can change is their teaching style if i change my teaching style that suits to the assessment style then the learning style will change you have to remember teaching style determines the assessment style assessment style determines the learning style if you want to change the learning change the assessment style if you want to change the assessment style change the teaching style that is the way the cycle goes in the teaching learning process so final conclusion is change your teaching style we need to understand how to change because the changing comes not question of connecting always the content knowledge the change comes only the way in which you connect the content to context connect the content to context knowledge that is very very important i will show you a small video sure. and i'll change it Uh, this is one of the very of famous video which we the fibonacci search method it basically works on the fibonacci series if you recall in the last class we wrote the algorithm for we wrote the algorithm for any number f of n in the fibonacci series the first number is 1 right 1 1 
Okay, this is the one method which we have taken from Murray. We are not pursuing the quality of the uh, teacher. I'm just making an approach because this is the one approach which they claim the entire country need to follow. In terms of videos, they have made it and you have to follow it. But this might be suitable to the students who are making a, cracking a good exams. But I have to look into my students who is from Salem, Ramanathapuram, Tutukudi. I know what sort of mindset they have, what sort of culture they have. Because when we go with the different countries, I observe the country. If you always see the Bangladesh people, if you meet, they tell, pray for us, pray for us. Then I wonder why I should pray for you. Because they believe others' prayer will help, others' support will help. Because they got the freedom with the support of India. Uh, when we move to Taiwan people, they have a different mindset. When we do to Indonesia people, they have a different mindset. So the country's mindset, we can easily gauge by the way in which approach. The second method, what we call it as a writing method. That is a contact tablet. Listening. First method is a talking head method. This is a tablet, uh, console tablet method. So the teacher, now we have made a video. Imagine a growing plant having its leaf grown one above the other. There is a big threat for the life of the plant by such alignment of the leaf growth. The growth of the new leaf over the old one will act as a barrier for the sunlight falling over the leaf grown below them. Insufficiency of this sunlight will cause its deficiency in the process of photosynthesis affecting the food preparation of the leaf. Due to the curtailment of chlorophyll, leaf will eventually die. Then how the leaves are survived? What is the alignment of the leaf growth? Let's take, if a leaf grows in the angle of 180 degree, again the third leaf will be grown over the first and again the same will be caused. And if it grows in the angle of 120 degree, the fourth leaf will again grow over the first, causing the same problem, will act as the barrier and the leaf will die eventually. To find the angle of the leaf growth, hypnosis series is used. Let's learn hypnosis series. Let's take first two numbers of the series as one and one. And adding of the first two digits as two will act as the third number of the series. Similarly, one plus two is three and three plus two is five. Addition of the last two values of the series will produce a new value and the series will goes on infinite. And this is called as hypnosis series. There is another interesting factor about this series. If you try to divide the neighbor values in a descending order, the value will be very close to 1.618. For instance, if you take 55 divided by 34, the output will be 1.617, very close to 1.618. If you divide any larger number, the answer will be 1.618. The value of 1.618 is called as golden ratio. To find the angle of the leaf the 360 degree is divided by the golden ratio 1.618. The answer will be 222 degree. This 222 degree can also be said as 137 degree, where the 137 degree is called as a golden angle. Now let's try to arrange the model leaf in the golden angles which we achieve. The arrangement of the leaf will not overlap to other, giving a space for the sunlight to fall over the leaf below them. If you try to explore, the most plant around us are the trees or the flowers or the fruits are mostly grown in the same angle in this fibnosis series. The fibnosis series is also called as God's fingerprint. The fibnosis series is not only limited in the growth of the leaf, it's also in many major issues. To understand it, we should draw the fibrosis series in a geometrical structure. So let's draw a square and take it as one and another one next to it. The length of the two structure is two and square is drawn and the total length of the three structure is taken as three and again a square is drawn and the total length of the structures are taken as five and a square is drawn, and similarly, eight is achieved. If you draw an arc and connect the opposite sides of the each structure, a spiral is achieved, it's called as fibnosis spiral. From the shape of the snail shell, satellite image of a cyclone, and the shape of the galaxy, we can find the spiral. I'm just showing a, for, a small clip because if you see the human body height, from the navel, 
from the navel to the top, from the navel to the tip toe of your leg, it is a golden ratio. Your hand, this is a golden ratio. This fingers, if you fold it, this part and this part is a golden ratio. So the system always well checked, but we have to do the reality check of what it is ahead. But if you want to implement the outcome-based education, it's not the question of right or wrong. It is a question of our future. The outcomes, what you are fixed, you have to make inquiry-based approach to inculcate the teaching. The teaching will result in what to assess. Assessment will pave the way for what they learn. If it is structured in a proper loop manner, the continuous quality improvement system will try to improve and fine tune the system appropriately. So if you have any doubts or any questions in this regard, kindly feel free to ask me. Uh, this is the part which I, because I've taken 10 more minutes extra because I told up to 12. Sorry for it. But if you have any questions, kindly let me know, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks to them. And it's connected. And if you have any questions, kindly ask me, sir. Hello. Madam. Any questions from the participants? Okay. No problem. So if you know questions and uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A good teacher can inspire the school, ignite the imagination, and instill a love of learning. Thank you very much, sir, for your informative session and thought-provoking message. It will be useful to all the faculty members, sir. Now, hello, sir. Yes, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Okay, sir. Now I am inviting Dr. Prem Kisul, sir, Associate Professor, Department of English, to give a word of thanks. Left to all. It's an honor for me to deliver a word of thanks on behalf of ACCT. I offer my grateful gratitude to our resource person, Dr. Janathan Genga Dulasi. Associate Professor and Head, Department of Curriculum Development, Planning and Management, NITTR, Tharamani, Chennai, to take out time for, from his busy schedule to deliver a wonderful lecture on learning and evaluation and OBE perspective. Vainly, we are highly obliged to offer our sincere thanks to him for the wonderful enunciation through his pragmatical ways. Once again, I thank him on behalf of ACC team. Thank you, sir. Yeah, special thanks to our, uh, our principal, Dr. G. Selma Kumar, for providing the support to make the webinar successful. I extend my gratitude to Dr. S. V. Sangeeta, Vice Principal Academics, AVIT, and coordinator of ACCE for the necessary steps to conduct the webinar. Thank you, madam. I would like to thank all the officials of VMRF for their presence and felicitations to make the webinar succeed. I am very thankful to uh, Professor L. Prabhu, Vice Principal Administration, Dr. Vijayendra Babu, Vice Principal Part-time Studies for the support to organize the webinar. Thank you, sir. I offer my sincere thanks to Dr. Hema, Head ECE and Biomedicals and uh, Coordinator of uh, ACCE for the lead to organize the webinar. Thank you, Madam. I would like to thank all the heads of the departments for their support to organize the webinar. I thank all my beloved uh, faculty members for their participation and make the webinar a successful one. I am very thankful to the host of the webinar, Dr. Nirmala Devi, Department of Biotechnology. Thank you, Madam. I am very inducted to thank the organizing team of ACCE for the successful knowledge sharing center. Thank you.
Thank you, madam. Thank you. One participant has asked the question on criteria-based grading system, Ranjan Samuel, sir. Ranjan Samuel, sir, criteria-based grading system is nothing but a qualitative assessment. If you see the assessment, fundamental of assessment is measurement, measurement. But assessment is to sit side by. Assessment has a two part, part. One is qualitative, one is quantitative. In qualitative, we have holistic uh, rubrics or analytic rubrics, where we set a set of criteria has been defined. Based on the criteria, we will evaluate. So it makes a uniformity in evaluation. For example, I will tell you, if I come to uh, uh, AVIT, you are giving a cup of coffee to me. If you are asking me to evaluate the cup of coffee, I will tell awesome, wonderful coffee I added. Okay, that is a definition because it's a generically I'm telling you. But if you set a given a set of criteria, the way in which the coffee has been served, that is one criteria. And for criteria, you are going to define some parameters, descriptors. If you want, you can define. I'm just telling from holistic point of view, not from analytical point of view. First one is uh, the way in which they serve, the way in which it's been aroma. Because if it's a filter coffee, it has a different aroma. If it's an instant coffee, it has a different aroma. Because some people will like with chicory without chicory. So that is the second criteria. The third criteria, whether it's a piping hot coffee or sugar, the way in which it has been mixed, that is the color of the, 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 this thing, consistency, the cup which has been served, everything. So sometimes my evaluation will be skewed based on the wonderful aroma. Ah, oh, wonderful, but superb coffee, I can tell. But it will not be served properly. It will not be... But if you, some people would have served perfectly, but the coffee will be horrible. But still, we say excellent coffee. So to make it the evaluation more meaningful, more purposeful, in one way from an outcome-based education, predominantly we feel let's go for a rubric-based qualitative assessment. You give a weightage because qualitative assessment will try to bring the individual uh, differentiated evaluation. It try to bring it to the single numbers. That is a purpose, uh, Samuel Richardson. Criterion-based grading system is nothing but one form of a qualitative assessment where you use rubrics to evaluate to minimize the difference in the different teachers' evaluation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Janathan. Uh, thank you, Sir Lokumar, sir. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll call you back, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So now all the participants are requested to on your video to take a photo. The feedback link also posted in the chat box. Please do fill in. Yes, madam, it's done. I have taken the snapshot. Hello. Yes. Is over, I think. Hmm? Sir, can we go for the national anthem, sir? What is Yeah, yeah. Over, sir? Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. Just a moment. 
So the great UNDs end up with national anthem. Uh, Prabhaka sir, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Get groceries delivered in 10 minutes with Zepto. Download the app now. Is it audible? Yes, sir. It is audible, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you to all. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, madam. Thank, 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 thank you, sir. Thank you all.